Welcome to this edition of Get to Know Your Wayne State Football Program for the 2022 season. I'm Sports Information Director Jeff Weiss, joined by Head Coach Paul Winters. Let's do our season preview today. I know it's a little early, but uh, never too early to talk football, right? Oh, we, every day. Yeah. So let's start. Uh, three new assistant coaches, uh, one very familiar to Wayne State, Antoine Robinson, played on the 2011 National Championship runner-up team. If I remember right, he had a big uh, pass breakup in the end zone at Duluth on the last play of the game. I think that was Antoine. I'll have to ask about that one. I was going to say, I don't remember that. I don't know. But um, Antoine's been around at Northwood down in West Virginia, so he's got some experience at other schools. Uh, got to be happy to bring back one of your former players. Yeah, you know, um, he, he came back first as a GA and did a fantastic job. I, I was very impressed with his maturity and his growth from the time he played to the time he became a coach. And then um, he, he left us and, and got a couple good opportunities mm -hmm. to grow. Um, and I actually was trying to help him get another job before he took the, the Northwood job. And um, so I knew he was prepared and he was ready to go. So when, when um, Coach West retired, Antoine was really the first person I thought of. And I had other guys that um, had been in that position as well that I also considered, and I had some other great candidates. But Antoine really stepped up, prepared, prepared well for the interview, prepared well for everything. And he, not only is he going to coach the secondary and, and be the defensive coordinator, but he's also going to be the recruiting coordinator because he has shown in his time, especially away from us, that he's a fantastic recruiter. He, he recruited... Um, better players at Northwood than they had had before, and, and he did a great job um, down in Fairmont as well. Sounds great. Um, speaking of recruiting coordinator, Scott Kizmerski took a high school athletic director's job. He brought in Frank Espy to be your D-line coach. Tell us about Frank. Well, um, I'm really excited about Frank Espy. I met him down at the convention in San Antonio. Um, he was recommended to me by another person on the, the AFCA, um, trustee. Um, from Wachita Baptist. So he played at Wachita Baptist. Um, he, he coached a little bit there, but he's been a head coach in um, junior college in California and also offensive and defensive coordinator. So he's, he's got a lot of experience. Um, he's from the, the n Northern California area, and I always screw it up, whether it's Oakland or San Francisco <laughs> or whatever. Um, Somewhere near the Gold Gate Bridge. Exactly. Uh, but he's, he, he brings toughness, he brings attitude. Um, you know, Wachita didn't win until he got there. And if you ask him, it was his. It was all, <laughs> it was all him. But no, he, um, he's, he's going to bring, um, he's gonna bring a, a new element to our defensive line that we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. The final coaching addition, Derek Alexander. A lot of people in the area will remember him from his days at Michigan. And I believe almost 10 years in the NFL. So to have somebody like that on your staff that's been there, done that, has to help not only in recruits, but to tell the young guys in the wide receivers room, hey, listen to me, I've been there. Right. Uh, just watching Derek coach this spring, it was a revelation. And I've had good coaches at the position, but I, don't, I haven't had anybody that coaches that position as well as he coached them in those three to four weeks of spring ball. Um, he brings a, a toughness, an attitude, an experience. Um, like you said, 10 years in the NFL. Um, he's, he's a celebrity, man. When I, <laughs> people, everybody wants to meet Derek Alexander. Everybody wants to talk about Derek Alexander. He's humble, he, he's, he's intelligent, um, quiet, soft-spoken, but he gets after those guys and, and is going to bring discipline to that room that we haven't had. So we're, I can't tell you how excited we are about there. Sounds good. Well, let's take a look. I think one of the strengths this year is obviously going to be the defense. Um, you look at the linebacker, Corey, and you start with Julius Wilkerson. I mean, what else can you say about the kid? Academically, athletically, community service-wise, he's the full package. He's absolutely what you want a Wayne State Warrior to be. Well, he's a leader. He's intelligent. He does well in the classroom. Um, he's on the uh, All-State Good Works team. Um, just everything you ask for, he does it. And he does it with a, a toughness and an attitude that you, you love to watch. Um, I think his, the teammates, it, they, they really respect him. And um, he's a great leader. 
Um, who are some of the other guys at linebacker? I know Blake Gillum played some last year. Yep. Dante Reed, uh, Tank, and Marion Perkins, Tank. Darian Tibbs Clemens, Nico Mosley. Yeah, um, the, and then you've got a lot of young guys behind them as well. We recruited quite a few as well. Um, I will tell you that Darian Tibbs Clemens uh, this spring stood out more than anybody on our, our team. He dominated the person across from him. He, he was physical. Uh, he played like an All-American should play. And, and we're expecting that. It's like, okay, you've shown us you can do that. Now you got to do it all the time. So we're very excited about him. Um, we have um, Tank who, who <laughs> runs around and makes plays and, and brings an enthusiasm to the team that, that you, have, you love. Uh, Dante Reed, I think, is a special talent. Um, we're going to use Dante Reed's talents. And, and, and I think that they have a chance, you know, defensively using him the right way to be special. Um, we have Matt Bushman, who's a graduate transfer from Eastern Michigan as well. Um, Matt is a, a talented athlete and intelligent and, and is going to really help us with our depth. Mm -hmm. so, so, like you said, Blake Gillum has played. Um, it's a good group. We're, we're looking forward to seeing what they do. I think it's going to be a surprisingly good group. And I think we, we recruited four or five young men um, that are safety slash linebackers that some are linebackers, two linebackers, but I think three of them are safety slash linebackers that are going to push those guys and, and they're going to develop into really good players. Sounds like the depth, a lot of depth there at linebacker. Before we were talking about defensive line, you've got six guys returning on the defensive line who have seen significant amount of time. You've got Charles Ellington, King Quinlan, Devon Duncan in the middle. You've got Sean Banizak, Arnold Sadoff, and Jacob Mass at the ends. You've got to be excited about that core group. I am very excited. Uh, I, I want to start with Charles Ellington because he's 6'4", 290 pounds, and he ran a 4.65 this summer. <laughs> You know, we were excited when um, one of our guys ran a 4.8 or a 4.9 at 300 pounds, and then this kid runs a 4.6. <laughs> I was like, whoa, um, that's NFL quality. And, and if you watch Charles Ellington, he, he can be as dominant as any player in this league. Um, it, he, he's blocked extra points, field goals. Um, he's he's taken centers and guards and stuck them in the backfield. Um, he can be he can easily if he just continues to work and, and progress be the most dominant defensive lineman in the league. So we're very excited about him. Kane Quinlan, I, I've always loved his athletic ability. I'm looking forward to seeing him play more. Mm -hmm. And um, Demond Duncan is a beast. You know um, he he's. <laughs> He's the first guy off the bus kind of guy, you know. So um, we're we're looking forward to seeing how he does as well. Because Kane and Demond probably haven't played as much, so so we're looking forward to them. And you talk about the defensive ends. I don't know um, if if you you can find a, a guy like a Sean Banizak, who's 285 pound defensive end, that who also ran a 48, you know, um, and and. He's really what you're looking for in a developmental guy. So, so you recruit him, um, you get him in the weight room, and, and you watch them grow and develop, and, and that's what he's done. And then Jacob Mass is a long, lean athlete. So um, we're very excited about that group as well. Sounds good. Secondary, um, you've got Miles Harris played some last year before getting hurt. Drake Reed really stood out as the first year of playing. Special teams player of the year. And Chavez Hawkins, a transfer, seemed to come along strong. So obviously you've got some pieces to work with there. Other than that, it's kind of young in the secondary. Yeah, we'll have some youth. Um, but, you know, I, I would just say the secondary is not completed yet. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see how. I've still got a couple of weeks. I don't know <laughs> when this is coming out, but I've got a couple of weeks. And, and, and there might be somebody who we haven't named that, that steps up and becomes a good player for us. But Drake Reed, uh, you know, he leads by example. He works hard. He flies around. Um, he's relentless. Miles um, Harris, you know, 
he he had a couple guys in front of him last year and he got hurt and he didn't play as much as, as he wanted to or as much as I wanted him to. Um, but Miles Harris is a stud. He, he's as good as anybody in this league, if not better. And um, I think he's going to be a leader back there. Had a great spring, had a fantastic spring. We've got to keep him healthy. Um, Brian Hill's another one. You know, Brian Hill was, was injured now all of last year. And we expected great things from Brian. You know, he's 6'3", he's 200 plus pounds. And, and he's very fast and, and athletic, so he covers a lot of ground. Um, Chavez is, got, is coming back for his last season, and um, I, I expect a, a jump from last year. Last year he was getting to know us, and, mm -hmm. and now he's more familiar, and, and we expect more from him. Um, in the second, in the corner position, um, that's where you know we've got have some young guys step up. Chuck Worsham had a good spring. Mm -hmm. um, David Green had a good spring. Martel Hill. You know, Martel Hill, I think, ran 4-3 this summer. Um, so he's putting on some weight, and, and he's going to be a guy that contributes to us. Sounds great. We, um, all, only five returning starters on defense, so obviously there's a lot of competition for those other spots. So um, going over to the offensive side of the ball, 15 returning letter winners, only four starters. So a lot of youth guys there. Uh, one of the youth spots is offensive line. Obviously, we lost four of the five starters to graduation. But you've got other guys who have seen some playing time. And Krishan Roberts, I think, played almost every down last year at guard. Uh, Cooper Kukul has been in the mix in years past when healthy. Noah Nicklin. Who are some of the other guys we need to look out for? Oh, well, uh, Sam Weibel, um, as a tackle or a guard, really stepped up this, this spring. Um, had a, Played right tackle for the most part. Did a very good job. You know, he's a big, strong kid, um, a redshirt freshman. Um, you know, never opens his mouth. I always <laughs> ask him, Are you, do you talk? And he just kind of looks at me and laughs. But um, great young man, um, tremendous talent. We're looking forward to seeing him play it. And then there's Tyler Schompert, who is playing left tackle for us. Tyler Schompert also could play guard. Um, and he's a, he's a sophomore. So he played a little bit last year. Tyler Schomper, um, you know, he, he's, uh, he's maybe the guy who's going to bring the attitude to that group because he's, he's, he's tough. He, he's tough. You kind of had that at left tackle with yeah. guys like Joe Long and Landon Mitchell. and There's no question. Nate Thieker and some of those guys. We, we've had some maniacs out there. <laughs> um, and I say maniacs and how good they were. And, and Tyler Schompert kind of fits in there, and, and we're looking for him to, to, to kind of you know, blow up this year and, and be a really good player for us. Um, we've got some decent depth behind him. Adam Sarjo um, was a redshirt freshman that played a, a little bit this spring and, and did some good things. We're looking for, for big things out of him. Um, Aiden Tweedy was a, a young redshirt center. Um, who we're looking for big things out of. His growth has been tremendous. Um, Charles Wesley is a guy that I haven't talked about who stood out in the spring because, you know, he, he missed all of last season with injury and um, probably gained 40 pounds while he was sitting out. And he came back and Not a milkshake, like, 40 pounds. Well, you know what? It's, it's eating every loaf of bread in the house, 40 <laughs> pounds. Um, he just, you know, he, he, he's a beast. And it's funny because he's probably the fastest offensive lineman, and there were some plays in the spring where the running back couldn't catch him as we were getting around the edge. It's like, <laughs> slow down. Charles, wait for your back. You know, um, so, so we're very excited about him as well. Sounds great. Um, quarterback. Obviously, last year we had a number of people in there. Josh Kalka started, then got hurt. How's Josh doing? Elijah Taylor was a true freshman. Um, and then you've got... Um, Cole Cantor coming in, along with a couple of other guys that have been yeah. in the program. Well, um, let's start with Josh. Josh has had a great spring, um, did a lot of good things. The, the big thing with Josh is we need to keep him healthy because he's tough. And you, you go back to the Truman game, he knocks a guy out, you know, <laughs> running, running the, the football. <laughs> and then he tries to do it in the next game, and the guy goes at his knee. Um, and he misses the rest of the season. So we got to, hey, you know what? There's times when you have to slide. There's times when you have to get out of bounds. Um, he doesn't listen to any of that. Uh, but he's, you love the toughness. Uh, probably 
the best pure thrower that we've had since Mickey Mockner. Um, just, you know, he can, he can stay in the pocket and, and make every throw, or he can get on the edge and he can make every throw on the run. So we're very excited about him. Um, I think he's as good as anybody in this league, and, and I think he'll show that this year. Elijah Taylor is pushing him. Um, probably, if you ask Coach Reardon, uh, Elijah maybe had a better spring than, than Josh, and that's great when you have that kind of competition. Um, Elijah is also our punter, so that gives people a lot of things to think about because I'm not afraid to throw the ball with Elijah on fourth down. So, so we're very excited about those guys. Um, they're both going to play, obviously, with Elijah being our fourth down quarterback. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one's right-handed, one's left-handed, so maybe we're in the right hash, we'll roll left. <laughs> you know, we'll see. Um, those guys are, are outstanding. And Cole Cantor um, is one of the best young quarterbacks that we've seen in a long time, so we're very excited about him. We look to redshirt him. Um, we don't want to have to play it, um, three freshmen. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, he's going to be a good player for us. Sounds good. Running back, you've got a whole s slew of running backs. I mean, one or two. Yeah, we got one or two. One or, one or two on the field at the same time, or three. Well, we've got you know we've got the first team all league running back in, in Myron Harris, and Myron and Josh are best friends. So there are times I think we're gonna let Josh split out and put Myron at the the quarterback position, let him throw it to Josh. <laughs> um, but realistically, he he's as good as anybody in the country. Uh, he's outstanding. Uh, Kendall Williams, who was Second team all league last year. Probably I didn't give the ball to enough. Um, every time I watched them in the spring, he made plays, and 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 he's gonna. We're gonna use he and Myron together. So we're pretty good at running back. Sounds good. Um, tight end, you have Nick Potterak returning, so that's nice to have an all league performer at that type of position, especially with the youth in the offensive line. Yeah, Nick Potterak has had a good summer. He's gotten stronger. Um, you know, one of the things, he had a good season. He was first team all league. Um, but I think he's, he was even at some, t in some points better in 19. So if, if he continues to grow and, and, and make all the catches that he made in 19 and, and be as physical as he was in 21, he, he, he's going to be a, a, another all league kind, kind of, of putting guy. both sides together yeah, and make exactly. come in the full package. Exactly. Um, earlier we talked about Coach Alexander in the wide receiver room. A lot of young guys there who haven't seen um, much playing time. Uh, well, it's a good room, and and it's a better room now with with Coach Alexander and these young guys learning from him. But Dion Brown, uh, Dion Brown's a, a special talent. Obviously, if you ask Davison, he was able to play quarterback and lead him to a state. Um, pretty athletic, then. <laughs> pretty athletic and, and an explosive, explosive. And another Davison guy is T.A.V.M. Warren, who we put, he's a tailback, but we pulled him out as a slot a lot of times, and, and Kendall Williams. So it's not like that room's, you know, bare. And, and Manny Harris is a guy who we redshirted. Manny was a tailback in, in – high school as well out of Chicago and Manny you get the ball in his hands as a receiver he's he's got a chance to score every time so uh, we we're not dead <laughs> at, at wide receiver we have very talented young men and we have three or four freshmen that we feel are going to compete so don't don't be surprised if one or two freshmen are, are part of the package um, earlier you mentioned Elijah Taylor as a punter uh, place character you used a couple of guys last year, Griffin Milovansky, Jeremy Terrace, you had Luke Bevlaka mm -hmm. doing kickoffs who graduated. How do you see the place kicking duties this year? Then we can talk about returnees, returners, yes, and kickoff and sure. return after that. Um, Griffin Milovansky, I think, has had a really good year. Um, he, he was very consistent for us when given the opportunity, and, and I expect him to, to be outstanding kicker for us this year. Um, I mentioned Elijah is going to be our punter. Um, there's going to be competition, so when I say that, it's not like everybody's not going to compete for the job. But obviously, there's only one guy who can go back there and throw the ball like that, you know. So, so that kind of gives him an advantage. Um, there's going to be competition at the position. 
Jeremy Terrace has had a good off season mm -hmm. and has worked hard, and um, Max Fisher has also worked hard. So, so those are, are the guys returning, and we might have one or two guys coming in that that contribute as well. So, so we're gonna we're gonna be pretty good in the kicking game. Um, long snapper, you've had Lucas Kusak the last few years. Um, you mentioned Aiden Tweedy when we were talking about offensive line. I know he yes. was a long snapper He's as well. He's a long well. snapper. Good one. So you've got a couple, some depth there as well. Right. Lucas Kuzak, we got to keep him healthy. I actually got him hurt in a, uh, a running back drill, having him hold back. So I'm going <laughs> to avoid doing that this year. Um, but Lucas is a, has been one of the best long snappers I've ever been around. Uh, punt return, kickoff return. You've talked about a lot of speed guys, fast, faster, fastest. What are you thinking about for punt return and kickoff return? Or so, do they need to buy the program for the first home game against Shaw? <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's probably the best thing I can advise you to do. Um, I will say this. The guy who was our top kick returner before he got hurt last year was Miles. Mm -hmm. And he's special. He, he, he's Miles, I've, I would love to play him at receiver if we didn't need him so badly in safety. Um, he's tremendous talent, and, and he'll be one of those guys. Kendall Williams will be one of those guys. Tavion Warren will be one of those guys. Um, we've, we've got tremendous skilled athletes, so we'll have some guys back there. Um, this year's schedule a little different. We actually opened up on the road for the first time in a number of years, uh, starting our first of two years at Slippery Rock, come home to play Shaw, uh, first home game against an HBCU school in almost 50 years. Um, have a Division three school in Wisconsin. It wasn't Winston-Salem. Uh... It wasn't a home game. No. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. okay. All right. I'm confused. I got you. So um, the schedule obviously is, is tough. Maybe, again, I don't know who does the scheduling, but it's probably a top five or a top ten. Um, schedule in the country. We've playing, usually been around there. <laughs> yeah, playing defending national champions, and um, we play uh, Grand Valley twice in the in the same season, and you know those are two teams that are usually in the top ten. Um, and I know Shaw is really good, um, and, and everybody on the schedule is really good. Slippery Rock is another top ten team, so. I, I will say this about our football team. We've been pretty good on the road um, over the years. We, we've, we've shown the, the kind of mental toughness and discipline to go and perform on the road. Um, I would like us to be more consistent at home, and we're going to focus on that going into the season because we have we open up after our first road game with the next four at home. So we, we need to be better and more consistent at home. Um, I think a lot of this season will be our young guys figuring out who we are. You know, I think that there's not going to be a, a lack of confidence. I think the guys will have confidence um, because we have some guys who perform like a Myron Harris, like a Nick Potterack, like a Julius Wilkerson. So there's going to be good leadership and there's going to be good consistency at the top. So, so we're excited about what's ahead and, you know, you can't wait. Sounds great. Thanks again for watching this edition of Get to Know Your Wayne State Football Program.